You're watching the Emmy Award winning Richard French live only on RNN. A few hours ago, President Obama, he met with some of the nation's leading gay right advocates to hear their frustrations. That over what they call a lack of progress on issues of importance to the gay community. Issues like same-sex marriage and the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell, as well as the Defense of Marriage Act. The timing? It's twofold. The president, he's looking to limit criticism from what should be a solid base of his support, but also because this weekend, it marks the 40th anniversary of the event that essentially started the gay rights movement. But even today, few people know the history of that event, the Stonewall Riots. Let's bring in Andrew Whitman. He's got much more. Well, Rich, the riots, known simply as just Stonewall, were a series of clashes between the gay, lesbian, and transgendered community of New York's Greenwich Village and the NYPD. This is not the sort of planned or even staged event we've come to associate with modern rallies. It began with a raid on the Stonewall Inn, a village gay bar 40 years ago in the early morning hours of June 28, 1969. It was a hot night, number one, um, a lot of pent-up anger. We were in the bar and it was cooler and we were having a good time. They made us stop, they harassed us. Everything came together and it was just time for this to happen. It was percolating through people and it really uh, came, came to a head, you know, people really uh, were mad as hell and weren't going to take it, they, 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 you know. Late last week, Stonewall veterans and others who helped launch the gay rights movement gathered in New York City. They spoke about an era when gay Americans had no rights and faced formal discrimination, the time before Stonewall. Being uh, labeled, uh, uh, denounced as a homosexual was almost uh, second to a death sentence and killing someone's off a professional career and, uh, and job. New York City's Greenwich Village was the main gay neighborhood in America. Uh, the Stonewall Inn was the most popular gay bar in that neighborhood. Raids on bars like the Stonewall were common but usually announced. Yet ironically, the raid that prompted the riots had more to do with the bar's ownership connections to the mafia than the fact that the bar was a gay bar. The particular raid on the Stonewall came because of a blackmail operation that had reached to Wall Street. But that didn't matter. When police moved into the Stonewall, something snapped. Patrons who had typically cooperated during raids did not. Others actively resisted. And soon a crowd of hundreds grew outside. It exploded and one person did one thing that got it going. A hundred different people will tell you a hundred different stories who they think threw the first thing. There were lot, lots of cops there. When a transvestite was put upon a patrol wagon, uh, the policeman asked her to go faster. She said she couldn't. He shut with a baton. Uh, she hit him over a purse. That angered the crowd. The people really weren't rioting. They were protesting demonstrators for their rights to be able to freely uh, socialize. But they did throw pennies, coins, pebbles, even bricks, and some cops were injured. This is the only photo in existence from that first night. A handful of other pictures were taken as the protests took a more peaceful turn over the following six days and nights, but only a handful. Some of the riders were grabbing the cameras from newsmen and smashing them because they were doing things like throwing bricks through bank windows and they didn't want to be arrested. Um, I think it's also the, the media didn't think it was so significant at the time. The original Stonewall Inn closed just a few months after the riots. The bar that stands here now was only opened in 1999, but ever since those riots in 1969, this has been the epicenter of the gay rights movement in the United States. The transition from riot to rallying cry did not happen immediately, but in the weeks and months that followed, New York's gay community came together and a movement was born. They were heroic, we were all heroic, but if it had just ended with those four nights of a riot, nothing would have changed. We figured out after when, I went, after when, when we, we processed on it in, the, in our meetings of the Gay Liberation Front, and more, it really woke up a lot of people. Today, the Stonewall looks very much like it did 40 years ago. Gay men and women enjoying themselves with a few drag queens in the mix as well. And New York's Gay Pride Parade is held every June commemorating the riots. It passes by the Stonewall too, honoring what began there. I'm not ashamed to say it. I, we changed the world. While Stonewall continues to serve as a constant reminder of what more remains to be done. Our history is not really seen as civil rights history. It's not seen as American history. It's not seen as human rights history. And I think that's what we need now. 
As we mentioned, President Obama met today with several hundred leading gay rights advocates. In the past four decades, the gay rights movement has increasingly become a political movement. But their civil rights struggle is not just one to change laws, but also to change minds and hearts. Tomorrow night on RFL, we'll profile the current and future challenges for the gay rights movement 40 years after Stonewall and counting. Rich? Thank you very much, Andrew.